Walter the Farting Dog, Banned from the Beach. And this is book five in the series. This is by William Kotzwinkel, Glenn Murray, and Elizabeth Gundy. Illustrated by Audrey Coleman. And here's someone uh, to say hello. Here he is. This is AR number 115742, and it's a level 3.6. Walter the Farting Dog, banned from the beach. Have you ever been to the beach? I love going to the beach. What's your favorite part? And this is for everyone who's ever felt misjudged or misunderstood. Mr. and Mrs. Crab were having tons of fun. There was sand and sea and sunshine every day. There was swimming and snorkeling and parasailing and lots of staff to boss around. You there, called Mrs. Crab to the pool attendant. Get that leaf out of the water. And bring us some fresh towels, said Mr. Crab. Make it snappy. If only that dog weren't ruining my view said Mrs. Crab. This dog. Well, that dog was Walter, digging happily in the sand. You never know where an old bone might be hiding. He detected something under the sand and dug more frantically. Treasure! A bone! And it's a big one! He strained to tug it free and let out an enormous fart. The umbrella that was shading Mr. and Mrs. Crab was blown into the sea. They watched aghast as it was carried away by the undertow. At that moment, father and mother arrived with Billy and Betty. Mr. Crab stomped over to father. Is this your dog? Yes, admitted father. That's Walter. He shouldn't be allowed on the beach, shouted Mr. Crab. He blew away our umbrella. It couldn't have been Walter. It was probably the sea breeze. The sea breeze does not smell like that, said Mrs. Crab. That evening, Mother said, Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had our own little vacation home right on the beach? Can't afford it, said Walter. Father, who had just bought himself a new set of golf club, Walter eats us out of house and home. Walter farted guiltily. There was a knock on the door. It was the manager of the resort. Um, we, we, we've been having um, complaints about that dog of yours. Um, we can't allow him on the beach. Um, I didn't see any rules against dogs in your brochure, said Father. Um, it's a new rule. It, it starts today, the manager stomped off. Sorry, Walter, said Father. You're banned from the beach. Walter farted sadly. Never mind, Walter, said Billy. Let's go for a walk in the village. Just stay away from the beach, warned Mother. In the quaint little village, in the quaint little village, lights twinkled in the trees. Everyone was enjoying the gentle breeze and the sweet smells of tropical night. Walter was enjoying himself, too. Traveling broadens a dog's mind, he thought, farting philosophically. The crabs were sitting in a nearby ca sidewalk cafe, complaining about their key lime pie. Mrs. Crab counted the problems on her fingers. It's not big enough. It's not green enough. It's not sweet enough. Oh, maybe it's too sweet, said Mr. Crab, smacking his lips. A pelican flapped its wings at Walter, at Walter, and Walter farted in alarm. The power of Walter's fart blew the meringue off Mr. Crab's pie. It landed in his face and made an awful mess. The crabs glared at Walter. That dog is ruining our vacation. Next morning, Father got a phone call from the chief of police. Um, we've had a serious uh, complaints about your dog, said the chief. I'm afraid we can't allow you on our streets. Father hung up. Sorry, Walter. You're banned from the village. Well, where can Walter go now? He's grounded said Father. He stays inside. That's not a very nice vacation for Walter, said Betty. Walter farted. Need I say more? asked Walter. 
When everyone went out to have fun, Walter stayed inside with his nose pressed against the glass. Well, thought Walter, I'll just have to make the best of it. He sniffed around for something to eat and found a sack of strange-looking tropical fruit. The label said, Cook thoroughly. Do not eat raw. That's what it says right there. Well, since Walter couldn't read, he ate it anyway. Then he went to snooze in the sunshine, pouring through the window. Billy, Betty and Billy were building a sandcastle on the beach. Look, said Betty, pointing out to the sea. How'd that island get there? It wasn't there before. It must have been underwater, said Billy. Now that the tide's out, we can go there. Let's go! And they waded out through the shallow water to explore the mysterious land. This is the sort of place where you find buried treasure, said Billy, beginning to dig. Suddenly, something shiny glittered in the sun. I knew it, yelled Billy, holding up a nickel. We're rich, yelled Betty. Mr. Crab sat up under his new beach umbrella. Those nasty children seem to have found something. The crabs waded out to the little island. Mm, let me help you, said Mr. Crab, pushing Billy aside. Mr. Crab found a rusty old key and waved it triumphantly. I have a feeling this will lock, unlock something very important, he said. Sure enough, ten minutes later, he dug up a door, and the key fit perfectly. Maybe we'll find a whole vacation house, said Betty. Though they dug for hours, they didn't find anything else, and they didn't notice that their island was shrinking. The tide was rising fast, and the waves began to lap at their feet. Betty looked up and gasped, How did the beach get so far away? It's the tide, cried Billy. We're marooned. Out of the way, shouted Mr. Crab, and leapt up out of the water. Mrs. Crab dove in after him, followed by Betty and Billy. They swam as hard as they could, but the undertow was too strong. The current swirled around them and dumped them back onto their shrinking little island. Our only hope is to build a raft, said Mr. Crab. Walter woke from his nap with a bad feeling. Betty and Billy were in trouble. Walter's stomach was rumbling like a volcano from the tropical fruit that should have been thoroughly cooked, but he ignored it and raced to the screen door. Locked! He stepped back and charged, bursting through the screen and leaving a Walter-shaped hole in the door. Walter ran to the beach and saw four figures in the distance, with the water rising around them. Mr. and Mrs. Crab were launching their raft. Billy was trying to help Betty, and all Walter could see was Betty. A Betty was her little head above the surface and her arms waving frantically. Walter plunged into the surf. Shooting pains twisted him around, and he flung him back to the beach. Was it a cramp from swimming too soon after eating? No, it was the tropical fruit that should have been thoroughly cooked. Walter, save us, cried Billy. Walter struggled to rise, but the gases produced by the tropical fruit that should have been thoroughly cooked chose that moment to erupt with terrible force. The tropical fruit fart produced a boom that was heard along the coast for miles. Coconuts blew off trees, and the crabs, clutching their new umbrella, were blown all the way to the Sandwich Islands. The waves parted around the little island where Betty and Billy were stranded, and layer upon layer of sand and shells were pushed aside, leaving a pathway across the ocean floor. Betty and Billy ran towards the shore. Halfway there, Billy tripped on something, jutting out from the ocean floor. Walter raced out to help him. It's a treasure chest! cried Billy. Bones, thought Walter, and grabbed the handle in his teeth. He dragged the chest to the beach. Betty and Billy pried it open. Walter was disappointed to see that it only contained jewels and gold. With the money from the treasure, mother and father bought a vacation home of their dreams. There was sunshine every day, 
and there was golf and snorkeling and parasailing on the gentle sea breezes. Experts said that it was the most important treasure uncovered in a century. But Betty and Billy disagreed. Walter, they said, you're the greatest treasure of them all. Crab Snack Shack. Try our famous key lime pie. Welcome to the Sandwich Islands. Walter the Farting Dog. Banned from the beach. <laughs>